Hello everyone, welcome to Rasayan Academy guys. So in this video we are going to talk about some really important factors that we need to understand for predicting the structure of the product that is the exo or the endo attack on the norbornenone system. So basically we are having the cyclic compounds, we are having bicyclic rings and how are they going to react with different reagents that is what we are going to talk about and this uh, concept when we are studying stereochemistry in reactions is also called dynamic stereochemistry right so this is one of our sessions on dynamic stereochemistry that is predicting the products of reactions with respect to their stereochemistry right okay so first of all let's consider we are going to talk about this in very short because we have to see the CSI net questions which have been asked on these concept right so the first thing we do is bicyclic rings over here so first of all you need to understand that this kind of a bicyclic ring this is a norbornane system and this ki uh, kind of a bicyclic ring is going to have one carbon bridge on the top and this is a two carbon bridge as you can see on this side as well as on this side right so when we are talking about some norborna known system this is your norborne known system right so if you are talking about this system uh, you will see that the carbonyl could be attacked by any nucleophile. It could be a hydride or it could be another nucleophile, right? So it could be attacked from two ways, either from the top or from the bottom. So how are we going to decide where it is going to attack? That depends on the steric hindrance. Okay? that depends on the steric hindrance if the nucleophile attacks from the top we call it exo attack from the top okay and if the same attack happens from the bottom we call it the endo attack okay so in the case of this system we call it exo or endo okay All right so yeah looking at this first reaction over here Norborna known system is attacked by a hydride. Now, if the attack is from the top, we call it the exo attack. Once again, right, this is your hydrogen over here on the top. Okay, and on the bottom goes the OH minus. And if the hydrogen attacks from the below side, we call it the endo attack, and the OH goes above. Right. So, in the in this reaction, how are we going to predict whether this 90% is going to be, or let's say whether this <coughs> is major and the other product is minor? How are we going to predict? So, we have to once again look at the steric hindrance. Now, when you are doing the attack from the top, you see you face only a steric hindrance from one carbon. But if you are doing the same attack from the bottom, you will face the steric hindrance from two different carbons. Why? Because the structure is actually like this. If you see it just through this carbon, if you're just looking at this molecule through the carbon, you will see that there is one carbon above and two carbon below and this has to be attacked. So the steric hindrance is going to be minimum from the top and more from the bottom. So definitely this is your major product where the hydride attacks from the above. Okay. Similarly, very much similar to this example, we have camphor. So in the camphor you see there is a little bit of a change. It is also a norborn and known system. But onto this one carbon bridge, you are having two methyl groups. Now even though the carbon is only one over here, but these two bulky methyl groups are going to cause a steric hindrance for the incoming nucleophile. It could be hydride or a cyanide or etc. So that is going to cause a steric hindrance over here and hence the attack from below is more preferred. Okay, why? Because this time the methyls are bulky and they are pointing outside in this way so the hydride is going to be sterically hindered now the hydride which attacks from below only faces interaction between these two carbons and the hydride so the interaction becomes less as compared to that from the top so here the endo attack is favored 
okay here the endo attack is favored and you see the hydrogen or the hydride transferred from below and this is your oh on the top 95% of the major product this is your major product and it is the endo attack so just by you know in these two systems you will see just by changing the number of groups you are changing the major and the minor product here you had only one carbon bridge and uh, that's why you had the major exo product similarly in the camphor you had two bulky methyl group added on the one carbon bridge now it becomes even more bulkier than these two and hence you have the endo attack which is going to give you the major product so we move on with and we see that if there are any more examples possible yes so you will have once again the norbornenone system and grignard is attacking over it so you know that grignard is once again a nucleophile and if there is only one carbon bridge it will attack from above and the oh should go below so this is your exo attack and this is your major product okay you have questions on these concept in the csr we'll see very shortly similarly you have these two methyl groups in the camphor molecule which is very similar to the norbornenone just that you have these two methyls so the attack is going to be from below or the endo is the major product the attack attack has happened from the endo position so the oh goes above right so this was about the attack on the carbonyl system which is just one uh, you know sp2 carbon if let's say we are having two sp2 carbons or we have a double bond so for the double bonds there are many reactions like epoxidation and you know these are all syn addition reaction then you also have upjohn oxidation which is going to basically give you the syn diol and so on right so once again in a simple norbornene system there is only one carbon bridge on the top and two carbon bridge on the bottom which is less hindered side definitely the top or the exo side is the less hindered one so metachloropurbenzoic acid will transfer an electrophilic oxygen over here and the epoxidation takes place from above exo epoxidation this is your major product all right similarly if you had this molecule which is actually similar to that of camphor but you have a double bond over here so if you have this molecule there are two bulky methyls now the metachloropurbenzoic acid will transfer the same electrophilic oxygen but from below the plane and this is your endo product which is major you had a selectivity question on this concept in the csi net exam if you open up the pyqs you will find find out plenty and plenty of questions okay based on the cis uh, dihydroxylation and i'll just uh, if if it is already done by me i'll just add up the link of the video right over here okay yes now axial or equatorial attack in the cyclohexane epoxide now first of all why is it axial and equatorial not endo or exo because in the cyclohexane you have proper names this is axial this is equatorial right however in the norbornene system this is not uh, you know in, in a saturated norbornene system this is not actual and this is not equatorial so you would just call them exo and endo right because they are not completely actual or equatorial right yes so moving onwards that how this different attack take place on cyclohexane epoxide or the you know epoxidation process both of these will require stereochemistry now first of all when you are having sp2 carbons when you have two sp2 carbons your conformation is no more a chair conformation it is known as a half chair all right so it is no more a chair conformation it's going to be a half chair conformation either like this or like this okay so how are you going to uh, basically understand that what is the stereochemistry throughout the reaction now first thing you have to understand how you are doing the elimination the same way are you are doing the epoxidation so for the e2 elimination yes you must remember that for the e2 elimination 
यू हैड यू नो वी हैड डिस्कस दिस की ई टू एलिमिनेशन के लिए यू रिक्वायर दी एंटी पेरीप्लेनर पोजिशन वॉट इज एंटी पेरीप्लेनर दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो एंटी पेरीप्लेनर पोजिशन इज वेन टू ऑफ योर लिविंग ग्रुप्स शुड बी एट एन ऑपोजिट एंगल दट इज वन एट्टी डिग्री टू ईच अदर दिस इज वट इज एंटी पेरीप्लेनर so first uh, first let's understand that how the alkene is getting formed so this is your necessary requirement for the e2 elimination that is okay that is the let's say there is a base base is going to take away the proton which should be anti periplanar to the cl over here and hence you are going to get your double bond like this now why are they supposed to be anti periplanar that you know already the the reason for this the reason for anti periplanarity is that you are having a bond over here in this way and in this way this is your h and this is your cl for example so if you take away the h if you remove the h this is going to okay this is going to bond very easily with the orbital because they are what they are parallel to each other okay they are parallel to each other and this is going to bond very easily and that's why the anti periplanar condition is required for e2 elimination so similarly let's say here you had the h and the cl that gave you elimination to give the alkene system but here we are having a alpha halo alcohol let's say so this is your alpha bromo alcohol they are trans to each other and in the trans molecule i have uh, deliberately drawn the anti periplanar condition that is your diaxial compound so the base will remove the proton from here it's going to generate an anion and that anion is going to attack over this carbon to remove the bromide so you are going to have the epoxide above the plane okay epoxide formed above the plane and why is that so because your condition is fulfilled that is anti periplanarity once again so the interaction of orbitals is very necessary and that's why we require the anti periplanar condition so similarly if you are uh, given this example let's say you have o minus and br over here on the alpha position this is how you are going to remove it and that's only possible in the anti periplanar position now why am i telling you this because if you want to open up the epoxide if you want to learn to open up the epoxide it will open in the same way it has formed yes or no why because once again the orbital interaction would be the same if you are opening out uh, opening this from the <clears throat> from the same side right so ye dekho this is the same epoxide that you have just now formed you have just formed this epoxide now i want some nucleophile to attack the epoxide from which side it will open that is a common confusion is it going to open up from this side or is it going to open up from this side okay so it's going to open up just like it has formed it had given you you know it had formed from the anti periplanarity it's going to give you the same thing it will give you the diaxial compound always always okay always remember this that a three membered ring opening may that be a epoxide or a xyridine that is going to open in such a way that you get the diaxial compound and that is actually hard to draw because you know a lot of students are not able to understand that okay so let's uh, consider two possibilities now this is your epoxide which has formed above the plane now after the ring opens up there are two possibilities you have to just draw these two cyclohexanes in this manner and check that if the nucleophile is attacking from here the epoxide is above so it must be attacking from below so what is the below position available on this carbon the only below position is an equatorial position and the only above position on this carbon is the equatorial position once again so you are not having the diaxial compound because the interaction is not so good over here so once again if you see the other possibility 
if you see the other possibility the nucleophile is attacking over here once again from below so this below has the actual possibility right and this is O minus over here so this is going to be more favored what you have to do is just draw the epoxide and see how is it getting you the diaxial product okay it is uh, not very difficult it's very very easy and directly asked in the questions also okay so this was about the uh, simple cycloalkene system and uh, how to form the epoxide how to open up the epoxide both of them will have some regio and stereo chemistry now the reactions of cis decalin system now cis decalin is extremely important and extremely confusing once again ye to ho gaya aapka trans epoxide uh, sorry trans decalin system right in this way and it cannot flip you know that it cannot flip why because if it is going to flip then the carbon carbon bonds have to break down that's not going to happen so it's it's not going to flip however a cis decalin system can flip like this okay this is your cis decalin system now example is the first one example being why am i talking about the cis and the trans decalin system because when i have some reactive bond at the at the uh, you know junction of those two rings it's very difficult to decide where is the incoming group going to go hame aisa lagta hai that because there is a methyl over here there will be steric repulsion so it should go below the hydrogen should go below this is what you usually think but let's talk about this this is your major product on the catalytic hydrogenation of this double bond okay catalytic hydrogenation of this double bond gives you major product where the hydrogen is cis to the other junction which is over here and why is that so let's quickly see so you are actually arranging the molecule in such a way when you are having the double bond on the junction carbon be very careful carbon carbon double bond on the junction ठीक है सो कार्बन कार्बन डबल बोन ऑन दी जंक्शन ऑफ दीज टू रिंग्स एंड हाउ इज इट गोइंग टू रिएक्ट इट इज स्टिल गोइंग टू गिव यू कैटेलाइटिक हाइड्रोजनेशन ओके ऑन द सेम साइड एज द मीथाइल व्हाई बिकॉज यू सी आई टोल्ड यू दैट फॉर एनी मॉलिक्यूल मोर देन वन एस पी टू कार्बन इज नॉट प्लानर एंड यहाँ तो तीन तीन है सी वन टू एंड थ्री ऑल ऑफ दीज आर एस पी टू कार्बन सो दिस मॉलिक्यूल इज नॉट एट ऑल प्लानर इट इज वॉट हाफ चेयर राइट लाइक दिस वन टू ओके सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अ प्लानर सिस्टम लीनियर सिस्टम फिर आ गया कार्बोनल सो ऑल ऑफ दीज विल लाई इन द सेम लाइन एंड ओनली टू कार्बन आर लेफ्ट वन फॉर अब वन फोर below and one for the other ring this is what is left for this molecule so i just hope you are able to imagine this molecule written like this now you see that the above face is more easily accessible as compared to the bottom face okay even even though there is a methyl present and even though there is a tosylate present yes but since it is more accessible the action will be greater at this place only all right so less hindered attack is going to be favored which is from the top and hence your product is uh, going to be like this all right so this is your reduction which takes place the hydrogen on the same side as the methyl so try to understand this uh, figure it's not very difficult it's there in your book as well so try to understand this and we ab hum aate hain kuch questions ke upar now there are few questions in csir <clears throat> which are directly on to this concept
you know however in the first question you have the methyl above hydrogen below so this is looking like a trans uh, system but in the trans system also you have the epoxide above okay in the trans decaline system also methyl and uh, the uh, epoxidation takes place above only and now when there is an anion you don't know where is the attack going to take place so what you will do you will just try to write it first Let's say orally up nahi bata sakte that where the attack is taking place. So you just have to All right, you have to write two products. This is one of them where the sulfur attacks on this carbon and this is the other one. ओके वेन द सल्फर इज अटैकिंग इक्वेटोरियली तो दो ही अटैक हो सकता है क्योंकि बिलो द प्लेन इट इज गोइंग टू बी लाइक दैट आइदर एक्शन और इक्वेटोरियल ठीक है यस दिस इज वॉट यू हैव सो वेन द सल्फाइड अटैक्स दिस कार्बन इट्स गोइंग टू बी द एक्शियल अटैक वेन इट अटैक्स ऑन दिस कार्बन इट्स गोइंग टू बी द इक्वेटोरियल अटैक ओके सो दिस इज वॉट यू गेट एग्जैक्टली after both of these reactions okay now which is going to be more preferred this one diaxial okay diaxial attack is more favored and according to that you see that b is your correct answer the oh is on the same side as the methyl sph is on the same side as the proton so this is your correct answer moving onwards to another question from net 2015 that is the major product formed in the following reaction is now what do you have guys you have a norborne known system being reduced by nabh4 right and once again it is camphor and substituted camphor because ek ester group bhi hai but we are not going to be concerned about that the only concern is ki ab jo hai hydride is not going to be attacked from above it has to be attacked from below itself theek okay. hai so oh goes up hydrogen goes down the rest of the molecule is as it is theek okay. hai this is going to be as it is so yes let's look up for such an option okay Now there is one more thing, guys. अब ये तो एस्टर है ही हमारे पास एस्टर तो रिड्यूस हो जाएगा ना ठीक है लेकिन वी आर हैविंग एन ए बी एच फोर सो दिस इज अमो सिलेक्टिव रिड्यूसिंग एजेंट इट इज ओनली गोइंग टू रिड्यूस द की टोन इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द एस्टर नहीं तो फिर आप वन और टू में कंफ्यूज हो जाते राइट सो वी डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज वी आर जस्ट गोइंग टू से इट इज केमो सिलेक्टिव रिड्यूसिंग एजेंट नॉट गोइंग टू रिड्यूस द एस्टर ओनली द कार्बोनल एंड दैट ऑल्सो फ्रॉम द endo okay that also from the endo so your answer should be option number 4 right yes it should be option number 4 moving onwards now there is a big difference between these type of questions okay and these type of question why बिकॉज ये वाला जो कार्बन है जिससे डबल बॉन्ड कनेक्टेड है दिस इज ऑन द जंक्शन दिस हाउ एवर इज नॉट ऑन द जंक्शन डोंट डू दिस सिली मिस्टेक वेन यू आर डूइंग दी एग्जाम ठीक है तो ये बिल्कुल भी जंक्शन वाला कार्बन नहीं है ओके ऑल दो येस ऑल दो इट इज वेरी यूजफुल सो हाउ आर वी गोइंग टू प्रोडक्ट द स्टीरियो केमिस्ट्री वेन इट इज नॉट इट सेल्फ ऑन द जंक्शन इस तरीके से सो एच टू ओ टू लेट से इज गोइंग टू अटैक फ्रॉम बिलो द प्लेन इन दिस वे राइट सो वेन द चार्ज फॉल्स बैक इट्स गोइंग टू अटैक दी हेथर ठीक है इट्स गोइंग टू लेट से दिस मिथाइल गोज अप एंड दी ऑक्सीजन एंड दिस मिथाइल ऑल्सो गोज अप एंड दिस ऑक्सीजन 
इज योर ऑक्सीजन राइट तो ये इस तरीके से अटैक कर देगा एच टू ओ टू दट इज अल्फा बीटा अनसेचुरेटेड कीटोन सिस्टम को इपॉक्सीडेशन नाउ वाई पर्टिकुलरली फ्रॉम बिलो बिकॉज दिस इज नॉट द जंक्शन कार्बन मिथाइल हियर इज प्रोवाइडिंग स्टेरिक हेंड्रेंस इसलिए इपॉक्सीडेशन विल बी बिलो नॉट फ्रॉम दी अब थ्री एंड फोर आर बोथ रॉन्ग Now NH2 NH2 ACOH. Now this you know is going to be a rearrangement. Which type of rearrangement? All right. So there we are. One methyl above, O minus below. There is a double bond. ठीक है. ये रहा आपका alcohol. Followed by one double bond. and a negative charge over here okay because of minus n2 from like this or negative charge yahan fall karega jiski wajah se it is going to take away a proton from the acetic acid that you have theek hai and answer is going to be option number 2 the last question that we do the major product formed in the following reaction is so you once again see the trans system okay you once again see the trans system trans decalin system cf3coh is going to provide the oxygen where does it provide the oxygen that is the question you are having one double bond once again so let's say let's say i am doing the epoxidation above the plane so if i did the epoxidation above the plane i have water attacking in such a way in such a way to give you one to diol like this and there's absolutely this methyl so ye ho gaya aapka stereo selectivity uh, ka question and why not on the say, why c wrong because oh are on the same side why is a wrong because a is not going to give you di action only d see this matches with option number d only d is going to give you di action a ko agar draw kare hue a kaisa aayega see when the water is attacking over here then the a is going to form and we are not going to follow this method right make now guys i will see you uh, in more such videos or ab practice ka time aa raha hai because we have done mostly all of the concept in the stereo chemistry so i'll be providing you with some qu practice questions and i want you to take the maximum benefit of those so i'll see you soon and till then take care all of you